Hey friends, welcome to a new video. Let's work on some watercolor exercises. Today is all about color values, a little bit of color theory, and putting that into practice by painting 3D shapes and creating a very, very simple landscape. So first up, I'm beginning with a gradient using the wet and wet technique. I'm doing this to see not only what it looks like going from a darker value to a lighter one, but also to see how the paint behaves with water on the paper. This is a fun exercise to see exactly how the different colors and pigments interact with water. Okay, first up is a tint and shade chart. So a shade is when you add black to a pure hue, and a tint is when you add white. So I've put black on one end, white on the other, using white watercolor paint, and then in the middle I'm putting the pure hue. In between, I'm going to be slowly creating steps, mixing steps. So what I mean by that is as I move towards the black, I'm adding black in small increments to the blue. So you can see the different steps of color as it goes down the chart towards black. And then on the opposite side, you'll see me do the same thing, except using white, of course. Now, I know with watercolors, you don't need to use white paint. You can rely on the white of the paper, but I wanted to see how this particular color interacts with white watercolor paint. Now watercolor paints are designed to be translucent. They have that luminous quality about them. But whenever you have a white paint, it's just the nature of white pigment that it's always gonna be more opaque. So you can see it's almost looking more pastel rather than uh, glowy. So this particular chart is a tone chart and that is mixing a pure hue with gray. So if you've ever made a color too dark by adding black and thought, okay, I'll just add some white to lighten it up, you may have noticed that the color ends up looking different and that's because you are, are mixing a pure hue, blue in this case, with black and white. So if you ever uh, you know, make a color too light or too dark by using black or white, your best bet is to start over again rather than trying to add the one or the other to change it. So here I am creating a color value chart using the more traditional watercolor technique of relying on the white on the paper and just simply adding water to make the paints more and more translucent. With watercolors, you always wanna paint from light to dark when you're working on a composition. However, for some reason, when I do any of these exercises, I actually like working the opposite way. So totally up to you what you'd like to try but I do I do enjoy starting very dark and slowly adding water to make the color lighter you might be thinking okay some of those steps are the same color and you're probably right but I tend to do that so that I don't miss anything I don't want to go from say the second bar to the last one by accident I'd rather have a few steps that are the same and make sure that I've got every possible subtle change. I've seen some artists do this exact same exercise and have many more columns than these. So uh, depending how patient you are or how uh, meticulous you are, you can absolutely stretch this out. It's actually an exercise that I give my students and ask them to have as many steps as they can possibly create. It's a great way to practice some water control it's also good to practice your precision if you want to work on creating those perfect bar shapes. You'll notice that I wasn't really too fussed about having every single bar perfectly shaped. I am bringing all these values together now by creating these little basic shapes of a cone, a cylinder, a cube, and a sphere. Why am I doing this? These four basic shapes are essentially your building blocks for any anything you draw or paint. 
Practicing these will help you to really understand how light and dark interact with objects. Since we're working on a 2D surface, but we want to try and make things look 3D, we need to understand how light and shadows interact, and we are able to translate that by using different color values. So I've picked my light source to be generally in the upper right corner, which means the upper right areas of each object are going to be the lighter areas. And then I want my darker values on the left side or more of the bottom left, depending on the object. exercise of this video is to create a very easy monochromatic landscape painting relying only on the different color values to create a sense of depth and distance. The things that are furthest away from you will be the lightest and the things that are closest to you will be the darkest. So as you move from the back of the painting to the front or from far away to near your point of view, you'll start to get darker and darker. So that previous chart we did that you can see on the left is a useful referral when you're not sure what color the next layer should be. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed these exercises and I hope you find them super useful. I always say you can never practice too much. Another tip, I recommend trying out some of those exercises with the different colors in your palette because you'll learn so much about how the different pigments behave. And if this inspires you to practice, don't be shy to connect with me on Instagram. I would love to see what you paint. All right, take care guys and happy painting. Thank you.